Tell me something about yourself. What's your story? A sad one. Do you know the Temple of Melitale in Alanda? Do I know it? Can't remember how many times I've been there, how many times Mother Nenica stitched me up. We must have missed each other. I started to become a healer under Mother Nenica. Hmm. I was but 18 when they took me in. An age at which teachings interest one far less than love. There was a boy, Goslath. He'd bare his chest to work. The novices couldn't keep their eyes off him, tripped over their own feet, dropped things. I left the temple for him. We passed a lovely summer together, and then he left. Neneke refused to take me back. My parents uttered not a word, gave me a travel cloak and a small coin pouch. I struggled long to find a place where I'd feel safe, needed, until I finally arrived here. End of story. Welcome back to another Witcher lore video. So I've been holding off making this video for a little while as I knew it would be a short one, but as of when I'm recording this today, I don't actually have a lot of time to do a video today, so I decided this would be a perfect opportunity. And also, a lot of you seem to want this video. So I've decided to make today's video on Mother Nenica. So one thing I'll just say quickly for you guys, there seems to be multiple ways to pronounce Melitele, Melitella, so I'm just gonna go with Melitele for this video, and sorry if that's incorrect. So Mother Nenica was the head of Melitele in Alanda. She acted as an almost mother figure for Geralt, in his younger years, as she's known him since he was quite a young man. She's also treated Dandelion and has met Yennefer on several occasions. Sometimes she's described as the only woman that can keep Geralt straight other than obviously Yennefer, and this is in the books. Whenever he has any doubts or anything else, he will tell her, which is strange as, as they say, which is meant to be deprived of emotion. Which we know isn't true, but he lets it slip for her, which shows Mother Nenica's close relationship with Geralt. So as I touched on briefly then, this priestess, if you look at her, is supposed to be kind of a motherly figure, and also a stern figure, but she never liked the idea of being called Mother, she just didn't like the way that she was called it. But, I suppose with nicknames, sometimes you don't get to choose your own. Mother Nenica had her own pharmacy, and it was renowned for its potions, elixirs, ointments, and salves, some of which required herbs growing only in the crystal-roofed greenhouse on the temple grounds. So she was, at least in the Witcher world, a world-renowned healer. And I've actually just thought of something while making this video. If you decide to do it in this way, the Baron takes his wife, Anna, to go and be healed. He says he's gonna go to the Blue Mountain but I imagine if he goes there and that doesn't work out, Mother Nenica is going to be that important and famous, he'll probably go and see her. She was also known for a few other things, for example, the wife of Duke Hera Ward, Ermelia, was actually known to enjoy the aphrodisiacs Mother Nenica cooks up. She's quite a big part of the Last Wish book, and she takes part in a story known as The Voice of Reason. And this is a story that has actually cut up into multiple parts and spread out through over the Last Wish, and if you compile it all together, makes a story. So, for example, Geralt will talk about something to Mother Nenica, and then it will reference it back, and then a new story comes off, and that's where all the stories in the Last Wish come from. And towards the end of that book, a Duke on the Order of the White Rose show up, and they want Geralt to leave Elander. She defends him and says that the Duke has no jurisdiction over the temple, and that the Witcher could stay there for as long as he wanted. And I think it's very strange that she actually never appears in the Witcher games whatsoever, considering the close relationship Geralt appeared to have with her. Whenever he was injured, whenever he had any troubles, he would always go to Mother Nenica. For example, after Kaer Morhen, he didn't really know what to do with Ciri while he went out and did contracts and tried to sort out things, so he took her to the Temple of Melitale in Elanda, and that's where Ciri met Mother Nenica and she taught her many things and gave her many classes. She's actually a very big part of the books and appears in every single one of them. I'm not going to go over everything that happens to her in all of those books, as I I imagine a lot of you want to read them, this video is basically just meant to be some background information on her, and just some general ideas of who she is. Not much is known about her origins, but we can imagine she probably went to the temple at a young age, like many of the young priestesses there, and I imagine her connection with Geralt probably came from him needing help at one point than going to the temple for that help. It's a fairly simple relationship, and she's a fairly simple character, but she's a very, very good character throughout the entire series of the books. And although she may not exactly appear in every part of the books, she is at least described in them. So I'm going to end today's video. I said at the start of the video this one was going to be a short one, but an interesting fact is that in White Orchard at the start of The Witcher 3, Geralt meets a local herbalist, and this is obviously Tamoira, or Tamira, I think, I can't remember how to say it. And she actually tells him that she studied under Neneca, but for some reason she had to leave the Temple of Melitale and find a new home, hence why she ended up in White Orchard. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed today's short video. Tomorrow's video is probably going to be a bit of a long one, but I was getting this video requested pretty much every single video, so I thought if I just cover it. The reason I don't want to tell you every single aspect of her throughout the book 
looks and things as that can definitely go into later videos. This is just a background so you understand the character a little bit more for those of you that have never read the books. So anyway, yeah, that's the end of today's video. Be sure to go and follow my Twitter for the polls of the random fandom lore video I do every two weeks. Be sure to follow my Twitch so I'm going to try and stream more games on there soon. And as always, a big, big thank you to the Patreon pledges. You guys are seriously just thank you so, so much. It's honestly amazing that you guys donate to me. It's it's honestly, it's, it's just so kind of you. So thank you all so, so much. Anyway, I'll see you all later, guys. Have an awesome week.